Hey everyone, it's your soul here. And for those of you who aren't on the Steam blockchain using Steam powered social networking sites, I'm going to take you on a bit of a brief guided tour here of what's been happening in the last few months on Steam and weeks and days, in fact, because it's changed quite a lot. And still, a lot of people, I think, in the world simply don't understand Steam or have never even heard of it or have had bad experiences with it. So I just really want to go through some of the recent changes and some of the background so that you might think again about using it because in my opinion it really is one of the best things on the internet despite the problems it's had in the past uh, which seem to be gradually being solved. Uh, so let's just dive in. So a brief overview is that Steam is a cryptocurrency and a blockchain and a social network ecosystem. Now what does all of that mean? Well a blockchain is a form of computer system that's effectively a database that holds information but rather than being centralized in one location on a computer somewhere it's actually distributed or decentralized at di in, in different locations and run by different people and it, the system is specifically di designed to allow pretty much anybody who can run a computer server to participate in running this database system so this has a lot of different applications, and that's why there are thousands of blockchains now, different systems being run for different reasons. And probably the most famous is still Bitcoin, which is a cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrencies are effectively a form of money or currency that runs on a blockchain, generally speaking, where the blockchain acts as a ledger, a way of recording the transactions, and also a way of actually generating the money itself, the unique tokens that are used and shared and so on. So Steam is a blockchain. It's also a cryptocurrency. There are Steam tokens. There are Steam backed dollars. There's two different forms there of uh, cryptocurrency that are interrelated. And so this basically means that you can, on one level, buy Steam tokens if you want to, use them to pay for things just like you could with any other cryptocurrency that's also uh, a trading mechanism. But it also has a social networking feature or outside to it, which is inherent within it. It's not something that was bolted on later. It was actually there from the beginning. And it's unique in a lot of ways. It ultimately allows people that post to the Steam blockchain to be rewarded with Steam tokens as a result of them, their posts being upvoted and the community liking them. Meaning that effectively you get paid for producing content and sharing it with people. and Steam has been running for about three years or so, and during that period, the price of Steam has gone up and down quite significantly. Uh, at one time, people were earning really stunning amounts of money from just from blogging, uh, much more than they would have been earning from their day job just from blogging. Many people were. And, and now the price has come down significantly, so now it's at the point where successful people on there probably are going to be uh, supplementing their monthly income, but probably not able to live off of their income from Steam. From just from blogging. However, they're certainly earning more than they would be on Facebook and Twitter and other social networks that don't pay you anything. Uh, however, there's also another side to Steam which is very powerful, which is that because it's a distributed database, it's essentially not censored. There is no central authority really that can censor the blockchain. Uh, it requires a consensus of different so-called witnesses who run this network, different people effectively who run these different um, computer servers to all agree specifically that something needs to be censored or deleted before it will be del deleted from the, from the blockchain and that's not an easy process to go through by any means and so it almost never happens i believe it's only happened maybe a handful of times as a result of criminal pornography being put on there um but that doesn't hardly ever happen and so pretty much it's uncensored and you know that is quite unusual in today's world on the internet when mainstream social networks are extremely censored which is a huge problem for free speech in general and humanity in general. If we can't communicate freely because certain centralized so-called authorities are determining what we can and can't say, then that's a huge threat really to liberty and, and to our health in many different ways, politically and psychologically and emotionally. So from my perspective, it's very important to have an uncensored method of communication, and I like Steam from that perspective. Plus the fact that you can actually get paid is pretty awesome. and. There are a variety now of websites that actually integrate the Steam blockchain from standard social networking sites to video sites like YouTube equivalents, uh, audio sites, many different types of things. And 
so it's really exciting. I still love it. You know, I've I've gone through periods where I had a big problem with it for different reasons, which we'll go into shortly. Uh, but generally speaking, I'm still very positive about it. And in the last few weeks, we've had uh, an upgrade to Steam and some changes to the core logic and the rules of how payments, payouts for posts work. And I'm just going to take you through those briefly because they're quite important. If you've had a negative experience with Steam before, you might find that things have changed significantly now in a way that you like. So maybe it's time to come back and make a few posts and check out what's happened. So following Hard Fork 21, and the Hard Fork is blockchain language effectively for an upgrade, changes to the way things work. A few changes were made to the payout system. And one of them is that previously post authors were receiving 75% of the rewards that any particular post got, and 25% were going to curators. And a curator is somebody who upvotes that post. So somebody who's gone out and found this post early on says, that's a good post, I'm going to upvote it. If a lot of people then come along later on and upvote it as well, then those curators, the people that have done the upvoting, get an amount of the payout themselves. So basically it's a reward for having found good content for the community. So previously 25% of the rewards went to curation. Now it's changed so that 50% of the rewards go to curation and 50% goes to authors, which means that it's now much more profitable to actually be a curator on the Steam network, which means that there's lots more people actually going in and manually finding the best posts because that's how they're going to make the most money from rewards, uh, or at least they're going to make a good amount of money from rewards from doing that. Uh, now, this has had a, a few knock-on effects. Number one, it means that we're seeing more manual curation, meaning less uh, algorithms and computers trying to do curation because manual curation works better. Uh, but it also means that the actual process of vote selling, which was taking place for about 18 months or so, two years, uh, where basically bots were running, computer code systems were running, where you could go along and pay them some steam, and then you would basically buy a vote, and therefore you would promote your post to the top of the list. Uh, through just paying, instead of, as a result of the community, just deciding that your work was good. Uh, that pretty much has come to an end, it would seem, more or less, because partially because of the change in the payout system, but also because we now have another new feature where everybody gets 2.5 free downvotes every day. And a downvote actually lowers the payout on a post. So if somebody comes along and spends a lot of money to promote their post and buys lots of votes. We can see that because we know roughly who's selling the votes. And the people with the most power in the network, i.e. those with the most stake, i.e. the most Steam tokens, can then come along and downvote that post so it loses its payout. And this has had the effect of basically meaning that the vote selling bid bot operations are not really very desirable to use anymore because you're ending up paying a lot of money to get your post promoted and then your post isn't really promoted for very long. So. The net result is the original design of Steam, which follows a concept known as proof of brain, is starting to work again. And proof of brain effectively is a kind of lighthearted way of saying you've made a post, people have upvoted it and shown that the community likes what you've done, so therefore you've proved that you have a brain. You, ha you have an intelligent brain, or at least one that other people value its, its processes. So uh, proof of brain, I think, is a really great thing when it works well. Um, it does mean that you get a sense of where a community is at. If there's 50,000 plus people, as there are on the Steam network, making posts and voting, then by seeing which posts get to the top, to some extent you get to see the kind of thinking process of the community as a whole. And at the moment, a lot of people have left. There was there was a time when, there, I mean, there was a million accounts created. There's lots of people came to Steam. Then a lot of people left because they weren't getting the rewards they thought they should be getting. And there's a few problems with, with reward payouts and lots of politics and arguments going on for different reasons. So a lot of people left, especially when the cryptocurrency prices dropped in general. Um, so now, you're, at the moment, you'll see, as we can see on, on the Steam Peak screen here that you're viewing, um, a lot of the posts at the top of the list, let's say, in, in Steam right now, relate to Steam itself. They're kind of more programmer-oriented, um, technical people, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are, because people are interested in building Steam at the moment, and a lot of the uh, people who are not so technically oriented have left, or are just not regularly posting. However, this will change as more and more um, people come back into Steam and as the price of the token goes up, you'll see less technical things at the top of the list here. Um, there's always so many interesting things happening, and I know that a lot of people aren't technical, so they're, they're going to find this a bit boring, but uh, there's amazing things happening. I mean, that there's uh, we now have Steam Engine and this Nitrous system, 
uh, which is a whole bolt-on to Steam, which actually allows anybody to create their own tokens, completely their own their own tokens. So you can have your own currency, basically. Um, and there's a whole advertising system built into that as well. There's all different ways for people to monetize their content online now that doesn't involve going through centralized companies like Facebook and Twitter and Google who manipulate and control and determine what you can and can't say, that kind of thing. This is a fully, more or less fully public system now that, is up to us how we use it. It's not, you know, it's not controlled by billionaires. Let's put it like that. Um, so it's pretty exciting, especially for somebody who wants to um, see real free speech in the world. And so as we're scrolling down here, you can see there's really a wide variety of different posts on here, you know, all next to each other, because we're viewing this list, remember, in terms of um, which posts have been re received the most rewards. So there's no particular categorization. This is just all kinds of posts. There's art on here, there's news, there's tech stuff, there's all kinds of stuff. Now, steampeak.com is a, a site that I use primarily. It's the main site that I use for general use of Steam. Uh, originally, the site that everyone was using was steamit.com. That was the first site. Steampeak came later, and it's it kind of started off as a kind of copy of Steamit, but they've added on... Uh, a, a huge amount of extra features to make it much more usable. I definitely recommend anybody who wants to use Steam come and check out steampeak.com. Uh, you can obviously see that things are categorized, and uh, this is the home page, which apparently they're now showing on the home page a list of specially curated posts from different types of groups of creators. If you refresh, you'll get uh, posts from different particular curation teams. If you click on explore up here, you'll go back to where we were just looking, um, and if we just change that view there. We can change this sort list so we can see created. So this is all the newest posts, which you know pretty much have had no votes because they're brand new. Could be anything, anything at all from people all around the world. It's very popular in, in Korea and other places, uh, all different you know languages, and people are represented on here. Uh, we now have tribes on here as well, which is uh, kind of a community feature where people can get together on certain topics, and you can find posts you know that match those particular topics. This is a fairly generic site in terms of its features. It's just great for generally viewing Steam. You can see that people here, like this post, for example, uh, it's just the most rewarded post at the moment as I make this video on Steam. Uh, it's receiving all of these tokens, which you can see on this pop-up. When, when it pays out in six days, uh, you, the person who created this post will receive these tokens, which uh, probably is going to result in, I'm not sure exactly, but maybe something like 70 US dollars, I'd say, roughly, from without checking it. So that's not bad, really, for, for one blog post. Uh, $70 payout. I mean, yeah, if you're a top U YouTuber, your videos might earn you more, more than that, but uh, it's much easier to get payout on Steam than it is on YouTube. Let's put it like that. So if we move on to the next site here, this is steamit.com. As I mentioned, this was the first Steam site. People might be familiar with this. If you've used Steam before, this is probably what you used. Uh, it's basically similar, but a lot less features on it. Um, so yeah, not too much more to say about that. Here we have D.Tube, which is uh, or was the first video site on Steam that's a kind of copy of YouTube in a way. So it works pretty similar to YouTube, except that you get paid out in tokens for your posts or your videos instead of uh, you know having to rely on possibly getting your video monetized through advertising on YouTube and then possibly getting paid something at some point. I've been on YouTube for, I don't even know, like eight years, something like that, uploading videos, and I've never received a single penny. So, you know, to me, it's a no-brainer. If, if there's a video site that can replace YouTube that works on the Steam blockchain, I'm going to use it and support it. It's uncensored as well. I've, I've got video of my comments being sandboxed on YouTube, meaning that it makes it appear that, that my comments are visible to everyone else, when in fact they're not. They're only visible to me, so I think I'm not being censored. Very underhand, very malicious, in my opinion, from Google. And we've had the various whistleblowers coming out from Google explaining how they've got first-hand experience of Google deliberately manipulating the content for political reasons and profit gain and so on. Uh, yeah, DTube. And we also have 3Speak, which is another new video site on, on Steam. Where it's literally only a few weeks old, uh, which originally aimed to be representing free speech specifically. So it was targeted specifically at people that have been deplatformed on YouTube and so on. Uh, so you can see Tommy Robinson from England's on here. I'm actually one of the top people on here as well in terms of views at the moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, another great site. So similar to DTube in a lot of ways, the main difference being at the moment that 3Speak maintains your videos indefinitely. Once they're on there, they won't be deleted, whereas DTube only stores your videos for a certain amount of time 
uh, because of the cost of hosting the videos, ultimately. Uh, I think it's 30 days and then they get removed. There are ways around that on DTube. You can pay a third-party service to give you video storage, which will mean your videos will stay up indefinitely or until you, as long as you keep paying the subscription fees. Uh, but 3Speed, three, three once your video's up there, it stays there forever. So that's why I'm more focused on that at the moment. Uh, I like it, you know, so far it's working well. So another site to check out, definitely, 3Speak.online. We also have here D-Sound, which is uh, Steam's equivalent to SoundCloud at the moment. Very similar to SoundCloud in a lot of ways. Uh, it doesn't have quite all the same features. It's a bit more basic, but at the end of the day, you can upload music on here, get up votes and get paid out, which is, you know, really what people want. So... Uh, another site definitely that's worth checking out and supporting if you make music or audio of some kind. And here we have my site, Eureka.org, which recently had Steam integrated in at the beginning of this year. Uh, still have a way to go before that's completely finished and perfect, but it's uh, the basics are there. You can make posts and get paid out and view your wallet and uh, make comments, and the comments come through from Steam into Eureka and so on. Uh, so you can see uh, since the start of June, there's roughly $2,000 worth of uh, Steam basically being earned by the content, content creators as a result of making posts on Eureka that have gone through to Steam, uh, which is mostly me because it, the site hasn't been marketed a whole lot. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's mainly my content on there at the moment. Um, but again, it's another great site. I like it. People generally like it and give me good feedback on it. It just needs a bit of a kick up the bum to uh, get more people using it. And in the next six months or so, I intend to possibly launch my own token for Eureka and really start to get involved in building and community building to achieve the goals of Eureka, which is not just to be a general social network. It's actually here to help create social change and to help individuals empower themselves and uh, make the world a better place, basically, without interfering with anyone. It's very, it's basically pro-freedom. I know some people get very edgy when they hear, all oh, social change. That sounds like social justice warriors and people getting in other people's faces. That's you know, if you want to go and do that, that's up to you. That's your free will. But that's not what this is advocating. From my perspective, Eureka is about self-empowerment and freedom. So it's about no one overpowering anyone else. So, you know, I think anybody who can't get behind the idea of people not overpowering each other, that means they basically want to overpower someone, probably, which therefore means, you know, they're not really in balance and they're not really in a moral or ethical position to try to put down what is the aim of a Eureka is, in a sense. So <laughs> so I'm quite confident, really, about the logic behind Eureka. It's just a question of putting that across to people so they understand it and getting people involved and coming along and joining in and, and helping build it. But that's my mission for the next few months. But as you can see, I mean, this is really just scratching the surface of, of what Steam is. There are many other sites as well. There's Steam Hunt, which is a technical review site uh, where you can get paid for reviewing products. Uh, there's Muse, Musing, which is a bit like Quora, where you can uh, get paid for answering questions. And it goes on and on and on. There's many, many sites. So I just wanted to give you this sort of overview of, of where we're at with Steam. Uh, this is a very brief overview, really, but because I know that many people have had negative experiences with Steam in the past, and I, I think it's a, a tragedy in a way that so many people came and left, because this site and this system really does represent something special, in my opinion, for humanity when compared to the billion user site Facebook, for example, and the massive amounts of money that gets funneled into those organizations. Uh, just so you know, uh, for example, Mark Zuckerberg, obviously multi-billionaire as a result of Facebook, uh, basically set aside $5 billion not so long ago to put into a foundation to basically perform uh, experimentation on primates in order to develop artificial intelligence type technology and brain computer interfaces and literally, the I mean, this is how they described it, was that they were doing experiments on monkeys, basically, to try to overpower their free will. I mean, to me, that's torture. That's torture no matter what way you look at it. You know, having, specifically overpowering someone's free will, in, in political sense, you know, it's pretty much fascism or totalitarian dictatorship, slavery, whatever you want to call it, psychopathy. So all of the huge amount of money generated by Facebook a lot of it, a large chunk of it, has gone on to things like that. And you know, that in itself should be a plenty enough good reason to not use Facebook and to look at alternatives. And Steam, for me, is really just such an awesome alternative. It's fully public and um, just so potentially powerful and world-changing. So I can't really say enough good things about it. Yeah, there are downsides to it, which you know we can happily comment and talk about. But the community generally recognizes those downsides and are working towards solving them. And I think we've made good process progress with that in the last few weeks. We also now have the worker proposal system, which basically means a certain percentage of the reward payout system 
or the reward pool now goes to projects which people can anybody can suggest and say I want you to pay me out this amount of money every day or however for however long in order to achieve this thing which will help Steam. So now Steam is a self-supporting, self-evolving system as well. And yeah, it, the future for it really is looking pretty interesting. There are other systems coming out as well that aim to achieve a similar sort of thing, but Steam has a very strong user base still and many people who support it and want to see it go from strength to strength. So uh, as I said, if you haven't been there already, do go and check it out. Go down to steampeak.com and uh, you can log in if you have an account. If you don't have an account, you can get an account via steamit.com or via Steam Ninja. You can buy one for a small amount of money or you can message somebody who's already a member of Steam and if they've got enough tokens, they can actually create you an account for free as well. So uh, you can get an account for free via steamit.com, but it takes a little while. They have to authorize you and um, for various reasons, basically you get a certain amount of free Steam power with an account, so they can't give them away infinitely because it actually costs them money to create an account. So yeah, you can come along and just participate, play around and have a look and see if it works out for you. And I'm sure that many, many people will be surprised by what you can do with Steam at this point. And it's only going to go from strength to strength. So look forward to seeing you in there. And if you've got any questions, wherever you're seeing this, you can let me know in the comments beneath if it's on YouTube and so on. Uh, then I will definitely answer and help you out. And as always, thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this, then please do give me a thumbs up and an upvote uh, on Steam and a reblog or re-Steam. Share along with your friends. And if you're on YouTube, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more videos from me in the future. I do cover many, many topics on here, ranging from technology to health to politics to science to just about anything which is focused on creating freedom and strength and improving humanity. That's the gist of my mission, if you like, <laughs> on social media, is to find information that helps people achieve those goals and to share it. So if you're into that and into making the world a better place, then do stick around and you, I'm sure you'll find a whole bunch more content from me in the future that you'll vibe with. So that's it from me for now. So until next time, peace.